All right, welcome again, everyone, to another G Squared Academy video where, you know, excellence is always epitomized, right? Um, thank you guys for liking, sharing, subscribing, viewing the videos, all of these things for every comment that you have made. You know, we thank you for that, for the support and the love. Um, realize, you know, we know a lot of you guys are watching the videos, but you're not subscribing. Come on, guys, just subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and the post notification bell so you can get a video every time it is posted. All right. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. So today, right, you know, we're going to be continuing um, with our planning and designing series where we look at specific planning and designing labs. And today we're looking at the Valentine's Love Letter PD. Sounds interesting. All right, so let's get right into it. So your problem statement, on Valentine's Day, Ella received three different cards from secret admirers. And she suspected that all the cards were written with the same black ink. Plan and design an experiment to confirm or deny Ella's suspicions. Know that the ink is permanent. That is, it is insoluble in water. That's critical information. And just to say from now, in, with respect to the solvent you're gonna be choosing, water cannot be used. All right, so we move on. All right, so our hypothesis coming in. Oops, let's go back a bit. Yeah, hypothesis. Um, the letters are not written with the same ink. We just took a stand, right? We could have said the letters are written with the same ink or two words written with the same ink and not the other one, you know? But we chose to say the letters are not with the same ink. And of course, this is testable and a position has been taken. As usual, you know, we have our standard headings, lab G squared Academy, lab number four, October 27, it's a PD lab. What's our topic? Separating mixtures, chromatography, all right? Because as I said before, when you're doing a PD, you know, you, you're like the teacher, so you have to know this, the chemistry or the science in what you're doing. And so therefore you choose a topic based on that. Our aim really is just to determine if the three markers are the same. That's all we're going to try and find out. All right. So um, we proceed to our apparatus and materials. You can see that there are a few things there already. But we're going to need the three inks, of course, paper, um, chromatography paper, pencil, ruler, or beaker, right? Um, and then we just go back and second there. You, you can either use ethanol or hexane, um, depending on the level you're doing this thing at. Um, of course, we said the markers are permanent, so they're not soluble in water. So we could not use water as the solvent. So we're going to use ethanol or hexane. So I'm going to use ethanol. All right, measuring cylinder and a watch glass. So that's our method. Gather your apparatus and materials as usual, you know. Set up the apparatus as shown using 10 mils of ethanol. And we soon show you the um, apparatus setup. Then you're going to allow the solvent to move up the paper, right? And when the solvent is close to the top of the paper, you remove it and mark where the solvent stops. Allow the chromatogram to dry. So you're going to remove it then and allow the chromatogram to dry. And you conduct your data analysis after all of that. So that's what your apparatus and materials look like, right? So you have your watch glass, which you're going to watch things through, your beaker, of course. Everything is really labeled except the beaker. So this is your beaker, your ethanol as a solvent, your three dyes, right? They're A, B, and C, just for simplicity. Your baseline, which is drawn as a pencil, right? Um, your chromatography people, and of course, yeah. So that's your apparatus setup right there. So next bit now, your variables. What are we changing? What do we keep constant? What is affected? Right, so your manipulated variable, of course, you're changing the three inks from the cards. So that's pretty straightforward. What is affected by this? A number of things can be affected. The retention factor of the components can be affected. The number of components that you see in each of the markers can be affected. And the colors of these components um, is also affected. Dep what you get in terms of color is dependent on the marker or the ink that you're using. So what do we control? Keep constant, the paper we're using, as you saw in the setup, we're using one strip of chromatography paper. We're not using three different setups because you introduce too many errors when you do that and you introduce biases and stuff. So we will use one setup. The amount of each ink we're using um, should be controlled as well. We're hoping it's the same, 
okay? And we try our best to make it the same um, in that regard. Then now your expected results. Notice here that I have a, um, a copy of the hypothesis. The hypothesis says the letters are not written with the same ink. So of course, you know, your expected results much ma must match your um, hypothesis. So it is expected. Notice again, I started, it is expected because it's not a must. We're just expecting something. That the number of components, their colors and RF values, retention factors, are if is retention factors um, will be different. So that would say that the inks are different because all of those things are different. All right. Then now data to be collected. What sort of information will be will we be collecting from this lab? So here we're going to be, so notice here I have card number and using a table. We love using tables. They're just so easy to work with. So your card number one, two, three, or ABC as I had written it on the thing there. Right. Then know the number of components that you get. And of course, in these areas, you could get more than one component. So you could split this box into a number of um, parts and then the color of components. So you split it and based on the components, you know, you write down their colors. Then you write down the distance of each color and the RF of each component. OK, so that's your data to be collected. And of course, you repeat for cards one and for two and three. All right, so how do we treat our results now? When you get your chromatogram, what do you do with it? Well, you need to measure the solvent front, right? Which is the distance moved by the solvent. So remember you mark the top of the paper. So that is where the solvent front ends. And you're gonna measure the distance moved by the solvent there, okay? Then you measure the distance traveled by each component, right? And um, I'll show you how we do that in a little second. Then you're supposed to calculate the RF using the equation distance of component divided by the solvent front. So here is a chromatogram, right? And so we're measuring the solvent front. The solvent front stops up here. And of course the solvent starts moving from down here. So you measure that distance. Then now you want to measure the distance of the component. Now we're assuming that the distribution of the dyes may be uneven. So you're gonna find the, the darkest spot in the components, the center of the darkest spot and measure the distance there. So you find the center of the dye and you measure down to the baseline. The center of the dye, down to the baseline. And that's how you're gonna get the distance of the component. And of course, in this chromatogram, you have a number of things. So you'd have to measure the, um, the, the distance of a lot of components here, All right, So a lot of RF values there. Okay, so pressing on, what are some of the things we cannot control in this experiment, but they do affect the experiment in some way? All right, so here we go. The solubility of the components in the solvent. We said it was not, this, the, the inks were not soluble in water. And so we chose ethanol and probably hexane. We don't know really if these dyes are soluble in the solvent. We're actually assuming that they're soluble in the solvent. And this is something we can't control. So we may get separation or we may not get separation. And we say, oh, you know, the inks are not written with the same marker or they are but we really didn't get proper separation because of the solubility of the inks in the, the solvent, all right? Um, the spot on of dye does not epitomize the sample. So the sample we are collecting, we're putting on the chromatographic paper. We are now saying it um, doesn't necessarily epitomize the whole of the sample. So we, we just got a sample, but it could be that that sample didn't have some parts of the whole, all right? So, and you generally only need two of these things. Okay, so your precaution, two, sorry, one limitation. Um, so your precautions now, steps you take to ensure validity and accuracy of your results, right? So you need to cover the beaker. Why do we need to cover the beaker? Ethanol is a volatile, relatively volatile, and hexane is even more volatile um, solvent. So you don't want it escaping. So what you need to do, and you want to create that saturated environment of the, um, solvent within the experiment, within the system. So what you want to do is make sure you cover the beaker so that solvent is not lost to the air, all right? You want to label your dyes properly or label your cards properly. When you collect the dyes from the card, you want to make sure they're labeled properly, okay? Um, anything else? Yeah, you use a pencil to draw the baseline. This is a critical one, 
because you don't want to use a pen and then know that pen because it's made up of inks or dyes it will affect your results so therefore you're going to use a pencil um, to draw your baseline and as as usual as i've said before you only need one precaution okay so we press on use gloves and yeah this one is also a good one um, you use gloves not to transfer oil from your hand to the paper, to the chromatography paper, because our hand has a lot of oil on it, um, believe it or not. We have a lot of things on our hands which could affect the experiment, so you need to use gloves here so that you don't transfer any of that to the paper, okay? And of course, you only need one of these things. All right, so assumptions. What things are we thinking they are, but they may not be? One, the dyes are representative of the whole. So the sample we put on the chromatography paper, we are seeing they represent the entire sample of the ink, okay? Then now the dyes are soluble in the solvent. So we are assuming that the dyes are soluble in the solvent, so we're going to get good separation. This may not be true, but we're assuming it is. Okay, and there you have it, folks. Wow, you see these PDs are so short, sweet, and spicy. I hope you found this helpful, and please um, leave a comment so we know what's up, what you're thinking. If there's something in this video that you want explained or you want to have a little conversation about it, drop a comment. You know, we respond to those comments and we help you up. So please like the video, share it. Um, with your friends, subscribe to the channel. As I said before, you know, these things are helpful, simplified stuff. Um, and yes, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.